Nation Nation, hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast with my very good friends, Ryan Boniface and returning Jose Noya. So we apologise out there, it won't be as good as last week with just me and Ryan, but you know, we'll we'll prop up Joe, we'll keep him going, we'll make it work. Thank you everyone out there for listening, follow us on social media at listen to n listen T-O-I-N and check out Joe on TikTok, Jay Noya underscore Inspiration Nation. The journey to 10,000 followers, you can be one of that 10,000. And more so, you can watch us recording live, interact with the show, drop some questions in there, get involved in what we're doing. All good stuff. Right, so on the whatever analogy for whoever's in charge of the conversation today I'm going to use, Joe, you're quite good at keeping the schedule. Who's up? Oh, well, I know who it is, but it just depends whether or not I went up to it. I went last week, so I think that only means one person. Joe, conversation for this week, please. It's not me, it's you. (laughs) I know, I know. I would say that I'm, there's back back story to this comment, and so go back for the archive and listen, but I'm most definitely holding the pickle this week. (laughs) Is that most weeks? Joe nearly (laughs) lost it there. I love it. Please (laughs) lift. Oh, Lee, you're so funny. Hey, hey, I think that's um, he, he's back on, on, on our TikTok. Thanks, man. Um, thank you for the likes. Appreciate it as well. Absolutely. How are you doing? Look at that. Getting some love. Getting some love. That's not you, Lee, is it? Pressing the like button, is it? That is not me, Joe. I have never pressing... liked you once in my life, and I shall not start doing thank it. Thank you, now. he, he. I appreciate you. I know yeah, you, were, you were named something else, weren't you? I know you were named something else before, but you've changed the name on your TikTok. So appreciate you coming on. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Go on, Lee. Right. So I, this is a topic I've skirted around. I would say alluded to, but I directly mention it when it's a lot of my ones, which is the great topic of mindfulness. Again, I forget what we speak about on here and what we spoke about in real life, but there's a lot of content there. So a lot of people won't have heard this before, so I talk for it. But I was, in my younger days, certainly when I was the age of young Ryan there, quite a worrier. And I'd worry about things into the future. I'd worry about things I can't control. I'd worry about things that might happen that I couldn't control. And, you know, I don't think this probably defined me, but I look back and it's something that I did, but I don't do so much now. And a specific reference, and I even use this, I was talking to someone this week and gave him an example of how I used to be a worrier as an example of how we can change who we are as a person. And many years ago, I was going to buy a new car. Um, This was back when the government was doing this scrappage scheme here in the UK. So you could take up your beaten old heap of a car, which is definitely what I got. And they take it as a deposit to a new car. So it's the first time I bought a new car. Very excited. Traded in my knackered old VW Passat for a brand new Fiat Punto, living the life. And you had to take in with you proof of ownership and proof of the car had an MOT. Now, I'd lost the MOT certificate, got some printout online that confirmed it was MOT. Went into the dealership, they took the paperwork, and they were like, oh, we need to double check, we can take this, and went off to the manager's office. And I sat there fretting. It's not going to work. They're not going to take it. What are we going to do? That's not going to work. I don't know how we're going to do this. Like, really worried that this was not, no, no evidence it was. They'd gone off into the room. They want to, logically, they want to sell the car. They're going to make it work. I had the documents there, but I was really worrying. But my partner at the time got quite frustrated with me, I think, because this wasn't the only time I was doing it. It was kind of like a, well, you just relax. They haven't even come back yet type of comment to me, which I don't think I would, in the same situation, I wouldn't do that now. I'd be a lot more. It's a Schrodinger's cat kind of thing. I don't know what it is until it happens. I've done all I can do. Whatever conversation they have in the room is outside of my control. Some of that through my own growth as a person over the last 15 years. And a lot of it, I think, influenced by these podcasts and conversations we've had and things like that. And then someone I met five, six years ago, maybe, turned me on to the concept as mindfulness. Was a big advocate for it and the benefits of it. And in my head, I kind of half dismissed it as that's not my sort of thing. But I was curious enough and I respected the person enough to give it a bit of a look. But I didn't I did bits, but it wasn't really rooted in my head. And I think what's happened more and more over time is I've realized that what are mindfulness practices are the things that help keep me calm. I just didn't realize they were mindfulness. And I look back and actually I think how much at times I was in the moment and, you know, things around mindfulness about folks they literally there's a vent in my wall over there in the chimney press where air comes through. And you, if I just was to focus on that for one minute, block everything out, stare at it, it just helps centre you, helps bring your thoughts. And there's loads of things like that. And I think I did things like that without even realising. 
And like I've talked about on a lot of podcasts in the past, once you can harness things you do and build and develop them, you can really, really utilize them. And I've now actually would say I'm an advocate for trying not, you know, I couldn't read off a load of stuff about it. I couldn't tell you a load of authors and stuff, but there are practices that I utilize. Some work for me, some don't work for me. Joe, I'm never going to start meditation, I'm afraid. I tried it. I did like it. I don't know. It's just not my thing, but there's loads of other things in that space that I can do. So I just want to kind of use this particular podcast to be an advocate for mindfulness and for those out there that have not tried this or thought about it or heard of it, just to give it a little bit of a go and see if it helps. Because I genuinely believe, you know, in this world in which we live, it's a great way to, regardless of what's going on, not making problems bigger, not marginalizing, nothing else, just whatever's going on, it's a way just to bring a bit of calm and balance to yourself to help you through day-to-day things. So that's my long open spiel. What I'm first of all, I want your initial views on mindfulness in a little succinct bit. And then I'm going to go through five beginners techniques that you can use to dabble in and try a bit of mindfulness and get your guys' views on it as I go through them. So Jose Neuer, over to your brain first. Yeah, mindfulness. Um, I keep talking about Eckhart Tolle in the power now. That is about mindfulness, about being in the moment, about your life is happening right now, so can you engage with it? That's essentially what he talks about. Um, so you focus on what you can control, and uh, you know, I really want to, to to focus on that. And I just wanted to actually, just before I just go on the second part of that, Clarky, thank you so much on the uh, on the TikTok for sending so many likes and encouraging people to like this live, so thank you for that. Um, and I actually think, I know you said you don't want to do meditation as well, but actually what you're doing is it's form of meditation. When you're focusing on that hole in the wall, the brick, the air vent, and you're just focusing on that, it's a type of meditation that you're just focusing on that and getting your mind to, to, yeah. to, to, to focus and to really just focus on one thing. So meditation is about focusing on your thoughts and trying to empty your mind. You can never really empty your mind, but you can make it a lot calmer. Um, and so I think they go hand in hand. Um, they really work really well. And I can tell you, meditation, mindfulness, all the big players use it. Uh, Ray Dalio does meditation. Tom Bilio does meditation. Um, you know, Eckhart Tolle does uh, Paranal meditation and also mindfulness. So he doesn't like calling it mindfulness, actually. He likes to call it because he thinks it's mindfulness. And I thought that was quite an interesting thing. It's not about having your mind full. It's actually taking thoughts out and just being in the moment and being in the now because your life is right now so that's my take on it anyway but yeah i'll hand over to ryan i don't feel like i do anything that is formal don't meditate i don't i don't sit and focus on specific areas to kind of calm myself down or to kind of split the thoughts that you need but i remember funnily enough i remember when we first started working from home as a result of covid i remember lee saying to me that he used to spend so much time on the phone and he would pace pace around his house, pace around. He, I think you used to say to me, he used to wear out his carpets. And for some reason, it always stuck with me. So this picture Lee running back and forth across his front room, like just <laughs> putting holes in Not his carpets. Not much running that goes on with it. Something he said to me as a result of that was, I think I've spoken to you before about kind of how you dealt with being so engaged all the time. Like quite often you talk, you talk about how you didn't really get much time to yourself to kind of, kind of do much or breathe. And you used to say, well, are you... I would make the excuse to walk around my house and I would start doing that on the phone. I would start walking yeah. from room to room rather than just going backwards and forwards because that meant that you could kind of de-stress from being in the work environment that was your desk, but also you could multitask by having the conversation at the same time. And that's something that since then I've always done. Once an hour, I try and do it every hour. I'll get up and I'll um, go and get a drink or... Uh, there'll be other reasons I need to get up. The door might go or I might need the toilet or, you know, whatever. Somebody in the house might need a hand with something that I'm sure most people that work from home can relate to. Um, as long as you don't try and do all three of those things at the same time. Yeah, of course. But I try and get, I try and find every hour is probably a bit of a stretch. I'd say maybe four of the seven hours I'm working, I'll try and do it. But I'll, I'll try and take five minutes max, maybe 10, depending on what, what it is to just to kind of, stretch my legs and stretch my body out and just kind of go for a walk and come back and reassess. Now, importantly, I don't do that when I'm in the middle of something. So if, I've, if I'm going to start something that I know is going to take me some time, if it's over an hour, then I have to mentally prep myself for when I'm going to have to start to do that. Like today, I had a report that I knew was going to take me, I estimated six hours and there was different sections of it. I managed to do it in four. Nice. Um, 
<laughs> and uh, I knew that I logged on at eight o'clock for work. I opened it up and I did what I did was I did the first 10 percent of this report and then timed how long it took me to do that first 10 percent. And I'm quite analytical like this. I'll do this all the time. And I realized that the first 10 percent took me 20 minutes. And I was like, cool, oh, that's quick. That's like three and a half hours. If I if I can kind of be about 200 minutes, it's nearly three and a half hours. I was like, well, that's not bad. I said, but that obviously relies on not getting interrupted, keeping that concentration and that momentum going the whole time. So I said, okay, I'll go from six hours to four. And I made sure I took those regular breaks at fair intervals of time. So if I ever got interrupted by a phone call or uh, a Teams message or an email that I needed to look at, I would then take the time to review that thing, deal with it, and then take a break to kind of reset. And I found that that just kept me engaged to keep going. So I don't, it's a very long winded answer for me to say that I don't really do much formal that people would list as mindfulness. But I think that's kind of the, the act, uh, the gift of the, of the act, right? You kind of find ways that help make it work for yourself rather than just following a, a platform for it. Yeah. Mm. And that's, I'm really glad to say that. If I'm honest, I thought here that Joe would be like mindfulness. Yeah. Which he was because it's Joe. And you might be a bit more skeptical on, I'm not sure whether that would or wouldn't work for me. And it's, I'm really pleased here that actually there's a bit, I think like I've done, you've got ways that you can identify things you do that fall in that bracket, but work for you and fit in with your approach and your, your lifestyle on things and how it helps DJ. So I mean, I, this isn't how I work at all, but I read something that says you can focus, concentrate for about 20 minutes before your brain starts to wane. And it's always good if you're, you know, if you're sitting writing, for example, it's always good to take five minutes every 20 minutes. And I think I kind of do what, but it paces out. It's some might, you know, I might get interrupted or it's slower and the breaks are further apart, but I do definitely think there's a bit to this work, the almost debrief on what you've done so that you can stay focused or creative or analytical or whatever it is you're doing but you keep keep your brain fresh by having those little breaks you can and always... it could be just like you said ryan something as simple as getting something from the door or walking to one end of the house and back again or you know washing up quickly for five minutes and then getting back to it again it's almost like boxing off the subtask of the task and again i know that sounds very analytical and very i think you'd expect somebody that works in it would say because they're all kind of tick boxes and stuff but if you break down a task you've got into subtask, like I did with that 10%, you can then box that off and go, done. In my, in my to-done list, it's done. And then you kind of break down the tasks that you've got in front of you to help you time manage it better as well. That's the way I see it. Well, you're actually doing a technique, both of you, that actually exists out there. It's called the Pomodoro Technique, which is exactly that. It's I think it's half an hour or 25 minutes, then five minutes. 25 minutes, then five minutes and breaking it up. So yeah, it's out there. It's a great technique. I use that when I'm having to do, like you say, long tasks. So yeah, it, it works really well. Fortunately, I'm too busy to lose ten minutes of every hour. But yes, yeah, so there's a there's a there's a. Um, I think a lot of people would relate to that. You, you know, even if you even if you just you're not working in a, a working from home office environment and you work perhaps in a restaurant. Um, and I've worked in this type of retail places before. There's always five minutes every so often that you'll go and stand somewhere and just go, oh bloody hell. <laughs> And then you'll you'll kind of breathe and go, okay, I'll go back. Or you'll get interrupted by somebody shouting at you for stood there doing nothing or whatever. But sometimes you need that five minutes just to have that uh, that five minutes. Um, it's a great framework. It's a great framework, isn't it? I think you're right. Yeah. And uh, as I say, I just encourage people to maybe do what you just said, you two, and also just to look it up online because it's definitely a thing. So it toma Pomodoro is that tomato. So it's a tomato thing. Anyway, there you go. You can use it as what a mean? reward system as well. If I get well, this like, done, I can... Every 20 minutes. Well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, if I get this done, I can have five minutes. I can check TikTok or I can go on Instagram or whatever for five minutes. That's my that's my present to myself for, yeah. for doing that. Or as a yeah, motivator, it works. Reward yourself different. with a grape. That's a deep cut. Uh. <laughs> deep cut. Reward yourself with a TikTok. T-shirt is available, inspirationation.org.uk. Right, so I think we can all agree there's definite benefits on recentering yourselves. As I said, I don't think I was always conscious of that, but I absolutely, not just buy into, believe that concept. So I spend a couple of minutes on each of these, get a couple of quick views from you, but these are for people out there, five techniques you can try now, right now, do them this evening, do them tomorrow, integrate them during the week things you can do i was doing it for those on youtube i was doing a lot of fives into the camera there it's a great special effect i think 
Joe and Ryan don't look impressed. We're but... just going to throw some sublim- subliminal messaging to Lee's yeah, palm yeah, as not... it reaches yeah. the camera. Join <laughs> like the army. Join the ar- like on the Sim- the Simpsons episode. That's a great subliminally, reference. Subliminally great message reference. people to join the army. <laughs> um, so, Joe, you'll be pleased. Number one, mindfulness meditation, and this is you know as simple as it is. Just whatever it is, we we referenced a bit earlier, but taking the space yourself, just taking five minutes to just be with yourself. Just sit on the sofa, sit on a chair somewhere. I think I went up and sat on one of the beds when I did this on a podcast ages ago, way back in the archive now. But it's five minutes to sit, focus on something or close your eyes. And the technique they say you can do anywhere at any time is to focus on your breathing. So just in, out, in, nothing else going on. I can see Joe doing it as we're talking about that there, which I love. And actually what it says is observe your thoughts. So if your mind starts to wander and you do get off on a thought, why are you thinking about that thing? What what does that mean? And actually bring yourself back to the breathing again and just, you know, be very aware of yourself and your thoughts. And I this the thing I do if I really can't sleep and my mind's racing is I will consciously think slowly to slow my brain down. And I think you can do all those sort of things, just uh just five minutes, focus on your breathing and be very conscious of your thoughts and don't let your mind run away with itself. And that is that is technique number one. Do we like that? Yes. I think I could do five minutes. I'm not so good with the 20 minutes that I did when we did my concentration and attention span. I'm con- I'm convinced I've got ADD. I don't think I couldn't do it. I couldn't sit there for five minutes. You might get 30 I'm... seconds out of me and then I'd be fidgeting or looking for my phone or it might be my generation. It might be my, might be the, it's a struggle for my generation with attention spans and things no, like what? that. You know what? And I have to have the phone out. I can't have the phone in the same room or it's got to be on do not stuff. So I do not know it's there. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, if it is distracting, that's why I tend to try and remove distractions if I can. But yeah, I, I get that. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So number two, number two on this list I found, walk-in meditation. This might be more palatable, right? It's a bit like we said about the walk-in while you're on the phone and stuff to break away. It kind of ties in a bit with the doing something at home, but there's always a task there. So this is take yourself for a walk. Again, just five, 10 minutes up to the end of the road and back again around the corner whatever it is and again just be with yourself so focus on what you're doing with your feet i was going to do a good family guy reference there ryan and go left foot right foot left foot right foot um but just focus on that what is the sensation as your feet hit the ground what's your what is your breathing are you pacing it as you're going what can you hear around you what are the smells again just it's all, all of this is about being in that moment and calming yourself not blocking out but i suppose it is you know Less negative word than that, but blocking out all those, you know, what what have I got to do this afternoon? Where have I got to be this evening? Just you've made that time for walking. You can't do any of that stuff while you're walking. Focus on what you're doing there. And that's to me, that's a real core of the technique of, of, of that whole mindfulness thing is if you know when you're going to do something and you can't do anything about it right now, you're not solving anything by just thinking about it over and over again. And I think the walking can be a bit more of an active way to deal with that. Can we have a sound bite on that? Can I have a quick chat on that? Is that of right? Of course you can. Are you moving on? So I try and do some of the walk to tennis. So I try and just take in the trees and just try and unplug. And the, the book that I've, I've referenced before called The Untethered Soul talks about when you're looking at something, be mindful of when your brain's trying to name everything. Like, it's, oh, it's a tree or look, oh, that's that car or, you know, that, 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 per, you know, Oh, that's that person, and if they stand out. Try and observe what you're thinking to try and let that go, and that really does help with that because your brain tries to name everything. You don't. You want to be training your brain not to name everything, just taking the sights as you see them. That really does help with the mindfulness. Yeah, I just wanted to throw that exercise from the Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Yeah, thanks, Lee. No problem. Number three. Now this is a quick one. It's a technique called Stop. So it's an acronym. Stop. Ironically, the first word of the acronym is the same word as the acronym. But stop, take a breath, observe, proceed. So middle of any, you know, you could be in a shop, you could be doing some work, we did this right now, and you literally stop, take that calming breath, take a minute to take in your surroundings of what's going on, and then off, you're off again. But you just take that minute, almost like a hard reset on your brain, just to take a very, you know, you could do that in 10 seconds, but just uh, again, it's like a lot of this is training your brain, it's getting into these things, it's making it, day to day and what you're doing that's what i'm actually i do so many things i talked about i'm gonna do that between now and next week a few times and see what it does to me that's a really good one isn't it right what do you think yeah. about that one that that seems like really great like a real 
almost like a hack that one I like that one yes my skepticism is that i don't know if and when i would ever use it <laughs> anytime you could do it right now ryan but why why what what's the what would somebody need to use that for it's give, just a, give us some examples moment. okay <laughs> or especially what i'd say when you're in a stressful situation so if you could when you start to feel the stress build up take that moment then to kind of it's like a circuit breaker on that stress build when something's you know if someone's winding you up in something or you're out somewhere and it's particularly crowded and you don't like that sort of thing or you've got a few different jobs to do um take that moment just to break from that build up of stress and just take that take that moment yeah yeah i i'm not i'm not being uh critical when i say i don't know when i would find I would need that but um i just i think it's good to know when people can make best use of techniques like this as well yeah yeah and um, i think that that's the good one for catching yourself before you kind of roil yourself up on something. yeah yeah i think that's, you know, that's something i'll try and do for next week as well well do you know what i think that's brilliant right because when i was in my 20s i i, I did none of this like and I think back, I wish I could have adopted this. Like, if I could have this mindset now when I was in my 20s, oh, I would, I would loved it, honestly. And the fact that, you know, you've got this opportunity to try these things, you're willing to try them, I think is brilliant. So I'm not sure whether I would have been willing to try them at your age. And uh, so, yeah, so when I'm thinking back to when I was 20, you know, I would have, I would have probably thought, mm, it's a bit, bit mumbo jumbo, isn't it? You know, that's probably what I would have thought in my 20s. So kudos to you, man. Kudos to you. Number four, number four. The title for it I've got here is Feel the Feet on Your Ground. So that that last one was more of a, a stress management, I think, in the moment when it's happening. This one's more of a when you're relaxed, getting yourself into mindfulness practices. I'm doing it as I sit here, which is why I've moved back a bit from my desk, is just be very aware of the feeling on your feet while they're on the ground. Move them around a bit. What? And actually, I'm saying that, and I'm mid-decorating here as you guys know so i've just got floorboards is, at the moment because we've talked is this bare back. feet or just with socks on well i've got my socks on right now but I'm, I? I can feel i'm the, trying it because it's the floorboards they're very it's the way it's they're all uneven and blah 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 and all you get in half and i don't think i've ever really been aware of it until now but again no. it's just it's another thing to send to your brain it blocks all the other things you can be thinking about starts focusing on a very individual thing and you could just do it anytime when you're sitting anywhere just to again encourage those calmer practices. In do you know yourself? what that actually made me feel calmer? Just by really? focusing, it's weird. We're just putting attention into my feet, my calmer. And um, you saying that remind me of a thing that I did probably about a year and a half ago, where they talk about grounding. You've ever heard about grounding, guys? Really interesting thing about grounding. Um, so what they say, because because we wear shoes, um, and socks, and that we never ever do sort of touch the ground. We're apart when we go on the beach and stuff. But they reckon you you should take your socks and shoes off and actually put your feet on grass so you actually are in touch with the earth some sort of grounding mechanism that helps the body because we are meant to be outside um we're built to be outside and that doesn't help and i actually have done that a few times by last year i've not done it enough really i should probably do it more but actually well, when i did that i did feel more relaxed because i think it does like bring the attention to your feet so if I'm, something of a similar similar thing but we're actually in touch with the ground so yeah really i like that i like that one but actually That's i do feel more Karma by and I say that's more that. of a deliberate mindfulness thing you could do when you can block some time out for it, which leads nicely into number five because it is, you know, especially if this is a new thing you're trying to do, trying to make it part of your daily routine, what you do, finding time. And it's the suggestion is to pair mindfulness with a repetitive activity. So, is there a thing or a few different things you do every day that you can pair with being mindful, even as simple as it's got here, unlocking the door? What's the sound as the key goes into the door? What does it feel like? How much pressure do you need to put on as you're turning? To, you need If you do that every single day, you can just start doing it every day. Or, you know, is while you're washing up, what does the water feel like? Or hanging out the washing or what, whatever it is um, that you do. And it's just these things that happen every day. And it's you've got an activity. Can you hyper-focus on that activity? Which, again... That might not be the thing you do your mindfulness with forever, but it starts to get you in the habit of thinking in a mindful way, taking those opportunities just to centre yourself a little bit. Again, this isn't, and I say it's all this, this isn't about kind of being reckless and never thinking about what's going on and planning and stuff, but it's it's the balance. And there's times when you need to be planning and forward focus. There's times when you need to be worrying and stressing, and there's times when you need to centre and balance yourself. And I think mindfulness is part of that essential mix to help 
so you don't get carried away with the other things. And actually, I really like that. I've not thought of this before. But again, if you, what can you do that's already happening in your day? You're not adding in more time. You can just use it as an opportunity to take, you know, 30 seconds or 10 minutes to practice a bit of mindfulness. No, I like that. Yeah. And, and you saying that, I, I used to, you know, when I when I was doing a lot of washing up with the, with the girls at uni now, but I did a lot of shit, I'd do it then. But I would actually turn off my, my phone so I wouldn't have music. So I'd be literally in silence just doing the washing up, trying to focus on that. And when I unload the dishwasher, we did a few videos where I just like focus on just unloading the dishwasher, what the plates feel like as I put take them out. So being really conscious of that sort of thing. So yeah, we like that. Mate, do you know what? But because the girls are left home now, I'm not doing so much unloading and loading. So maybe I'm going to take a takeaway from this and I'm going to, Actually, when I make my coffee, because I make a lot of coffees at the moment, you know, during the day, I might actually do it while I'm making the coffee. Maybe that's my new one. Um, so I'm probably going to try and do it now. So I really like that one. Um, they are my five mindfulness techniques. I want to give full credit here. This comes from Googling. Again, if you want to look into this more, just put mindfulness into your Google machine. There is so much stuff out there. There's loads of little books and stuff you can get as well. Um, but credit here goes to Dr. Diana Winston. Um, who is the, 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 the director, easy for me to say, of mindfulness education at the University of California, Los Angeles, so UCLA, and they have a mindfulness awareness research center. And I have completely pa- plagiarized all of the issues and articles that they've put up online. So there's loads of stuff out this like there, which is really, really useful and good to see. But I think there's five good things that I myself, I am taking from this, the stop, for when I'm, because I think I can do it when I'm aware I'm doing it. I've built it into certain times, but actually if I can use it to like circuit break that stress reaction, I think that that would be really beneficial for me. So I'm going to try and add that into the mix. Is there anything for you two guys? Well, I very briefly disappear off camera here. You can say you're going to take away from this. I think I'm going to attempt to um, just do the breathing check one that we mentioned. Um, I think that uh, uh, as a prep to when things might get a bit leery at work or when I know I'm going to get into perhaps a slightly stressful situation, just to remember that I have that technique to kind of prolong that before it perhaps gets a bit um, too stressful for us. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. And uh, I think to start anything, and for me, it's going to be the coffee, like just when I'm making the coffee to, to, to try and, because I have, I suppose lately, you know, I'll do meditation. I try and do it once a night. I didn't do it last night. Um, but I try and do it once and not before I go to bed. But these are these small little things that we can do. So I'm going to do the coffee one. I'm going to try and really be mindful about the coffee. What, the, what does the coffee smell like? Because I've got, actually got this nice coffee, actually, Alzira or coffee, and it's really quite nice, actually. You smell it, and it really smells like great coffee. But when I'm making it, actually, to do that, so that's mine. But also like the stop one, actually. I said, oh, I quite like the stop one as well. Where, that, you know, you can just do it. And I'm, like, I'm glad we've got this podcast because can, I can probably go back when I edit it and uh, – and I'll just have a little look at that one. But I think that's really great. And I've really enjoyed this, by the way. I feel educated. I feel educated. I do feel educated today. I love it. I love it. It's great. Thanks, Lee. This is a great, um, this is a great one. I think it's just reminded me to, to do more of it because I still don't do enough of it. I think, you know, something like being more, more concentrated with meditation, but I think doing these things during the day as opposed to having sort of a 20 minute, 30 minute meditation will actually add to that. So, yeah. Thanks, Lee. That's what I'm here for educating the world. And I really yeah, I like, like that, that, Joe. I like for yours. Um, did I hear you say, though, that you make coffee at night? Because that can't be true. No, no, I don't make it. Well, so so I have coffee in the morning. So I'll do it oh, throughout okay. the day. I'll have two. I'll just tell I'll, I have two caffeinated drinks in the morning. Then I'll just switch to decaf for the rest of the day. It'll be decaffeinated all the way. We'll not have another caffeinated drink uh, all day. So it does because it does. If I do have caffeine in the afternoon, I will not be able to well, go to sleep. This is it. I remember you saying this. So no, no, that's good. And Ryan, same as you. I think just like you said, no matter what's, you know, everyone, particularly in work, you know, things can get busy, things can get stressful, interacting with other people, all that stuff. So I think that's a great technique just to help especially if you've got a lot on and you're feeling the pressure, it affects how you react in other things as well. So like you, I'm going to, I'm going to have a go with that stop and see, see how it works. Hopefully this has been good for people out there. Again, social media, Joe, J Noy underscore inspiration nation on TikTok. Um, follow us as well on Twitter at listen to IN. There's some T O I N some great new followers going on over there. Let us know what you think about this. Are you going to give these techniques a go? Where if you're listening, drop it in the comments. Let us know if you do do these already, if you're going to give them a go, how it's worked out for you. Tell friends and family if you like what you're hearing. Leave us a five-star review. 
hit subscribe. All of that helps us in our growth and what we're doing. And most importantly, head over to inspirationnation.org.uk. Everything you could want to support the podcast is over there. Um, Joe's new letter, sign up for that, full archive of everything. Merchandise shop, et cetera, et cetera. Loads of great stuff. I think that's my shopping list of selling of things to do. But really, it's all about you out there, you listening. We really genuinely appreciate it. And if you can spread the message, that just helps us do more of this. Love it. Yeah. Any definitely. final thoughts, guys, before I wrap us up and we let go Joe go to be a tennis champion? Not from me. No, I just feel, I was going to repeat that I do actually feel that I've, I think there's a really great techniques to really just incorporate, even if you're a bit skeptical. I think it's worth a go, isn't it? If you feel le- if you do feel I stressed, agree. I and think- I say this that I came from a place of scepticism, and I'm on the other side of that now. So 100. percent And I think that's important, isn't it? That we can all come from this place of skeptic and try these things, and they work. And it, and like Ryan said, I want to what Ryan said is you can adapt them to what you want. Like you, you know, we talked about Pomodoro technique, but actually, you know, Ryan's got his own version of that, which he didn't even know he was doing. So it was great, and so use these things that lee has talked about we talked about but you know shape it that work how it works for you as a person you know we're all individuals we all work differently so it's not right or wrong it's just how can i adapt this to make this work for me so i feel better well what else could you want and closing thought just looking back over it strange monkey on tiktok i know they join quite often they ask that i am monkey in it is it i am monkey is that what it says i am monkey btw by the way is it yeah thanks for that by the way yeah, and also Clarky again, absolutely got yeah. us to one point one k likes today. Absolutely it's amazing, fantastic stuff. There's an ask on there saying clap your hands if you don't like pineapple on your pizza. I just want to acknowledge that and say that pineapple on pizza is gross. <laughs> oh, wrong, beautiful. wrong. These are the witty, informative conversations you can get involved with us on TikTok. You're we wrong, Ryan. I'm I'm talking over you, so you can't get in this point of view. Unbelievable awful stuff i don't know even know what you're talking about you're pizza. unbelievable i don't think we can be friends anymore we need to talk about this are we friends in the first place whoa yeah note, now who's I'm calling back count this down i'm gonna count this down <laughs> three two one inspiration inspiration catch you guys, catch guys later. Later. let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation i'd love to know put it in the comments below and i'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment i make to you in this community also don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free and also don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell then you're going to know when another videos go live and don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me because those are other podcast episodes that can really help you out i really really appreciate it and lastly don't forget out to check the newsletter the link is in the description below that's where i can talk directly to you without through the youtube throughout the social because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with inspiration nation ask me questions and even give me suggestions of what you want us to talk about next so i'd love to see you in the next video so please click on those links please follow through please let's get this community building i appreciate you so until next time I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.